So let's go ahead and begin part A. So we need to use either the constructive interference formula or the destructive interference formula. And we know that to be d sine theta is, e is equal to m times lambda. Or if it were the destructive, it would be d sine theta is equal to m plus one half times lambda. However, we don't have a lambda. So what we need to do is take this information up here, this velocity and this frequency, and we need to find the wavelength. So when we go ahead and do that, we'll get a wavelength of 0.177 meters. Now since we're talking about the first maximum, we're talking about a bright fringe, so we're going to deal with the constructive interference formula right here. So now when we go ahead and plug in the variables here, we'll get that the maximum first angle will be 36.2 degrees. Now let's begin part B by going ahead and using the constructive interference formula. Now we'll rearrange and we'll solve for the slit separation distance. When we go ahead and plug in the variables, we'll get a slit separation distance of 0 0.0508 meters, or we could write that as 5.08 centimeters. Now for part C, once again, we will use the constructive interference formula. We'll rearrange and we need to solve for the wavelength in this case. Now when we find the wavelength using uh, the variables, we'll get a wavelength of 591 nanometers. Now what we have to do next is we have to use the wavelength formula, which states that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light over the frequency. And the reason we're using this is because a microwave is an electromagnetic wave, so it travels at the speed of light. So we'll take that the speed of light in a vacuum, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and we'll divide that by the wavelength to get the frequency of 5.08 times 10 to the 14th hertz. 